So now that we've looked at detection, let's think about containment. So fire containment, um, this is obviously a big issue and this is something that we experienced in the T fire, fire, in the Hisasita fire, in so many fires where there's very rapid propagation due to the wind. Uh, so the wind is just causing that fire to spread. Uh, one of the key techniques then for fire containment is that of compartmentalization. So a structure or a region might be divided into different areas then for the purpose of limiting the spread of that fire. Um, so for example, a firewall is a fire resistant wall that is designed to uh, impede the progress from one building or from one portion of a building to another. Now, in particular, again, this idea of the fire propagation. There are fire propagation models. Now, somebody in the audience was telling me a little bit more about some uh, uh, simulations that are being done at UCSV on fire propagation, uh, which is very interesting, another touch point again. Uh, but again, the fire may propagate very rapidly, particularly when it's driven by very high winds. Now, um, and by the way, uh, this is one thing that we saw, uh, that a fire can jump very long distances when driven by winds. And again, uh, it somehow managed to jump uh, from uh, a, uh, a place where there, were, uh, where there was more fire, it sort of jumped over to ours. Um, so um, then again, I was starting to mention about one of the key features for fire containment is that of compartmentalization. So a region or a structure is going to be divided into different areas so that you can limit the spread of the fire. Um, so this is an example of a fire resistant wall that is supposed to impede the progress of a fire from one area of a building to another. Uh, you can also have a fire break uh, uh, or a fire road in wildlands areas, um, which sometimes occur naturally, like a river, but can also be man-made um, or for other purposes, such as a highway. Usually, fire breaks have to be backed up by other containment mechanisms because, when, again, when you have these strong winds, they can cause a fire to jump a fire break, um, even a multi-lane highway, as we've seen here before. So what about computer systems? Well, just as a fire will spread, a computer system, uh, a, um, and, and I've been thinking in particular here now about viruses and worms and how they spread from one computer to the next and from one file to the next. This is actually a figure out of some of my research that is showing, um, actually, it's showing group communication and how the communication goes to all the nodes in the system. But all those dots basically are representing different computers connected through a network. And then we're showing how um, it's a particular message or piece of information, or you could think of that as being a virus, starts at one node, is propagated to its nearest neighbors, who propagates it to its nearest neighbors, and very quickly the entire system uh, has the information. Now, if it's good information, that's a great thing. If it's a virus, uh, then that's not such a good thing. Uh, so let's talk then a little bit about viruses and worms. We throw these uh, names around a lot. Uh, a virus and a worm are actually two slightly different things. Technically, they're slightly different. The difference between a virus and a worm is the method in which they are spread. So viruses are designed to spread themselves on a single computer from one file to a next, but it's not self-replicating to another computer. It can be spread from one computer to another uh, when a user sends it in an email, which is why you're not supposed to uh, use you know, open attachments that are suspicious, or when you copy a file from one computer to another using a flash drive. Uh, but it doesn't spread to, from one computer to another without some sort of human intervention. On the other hand, a worm is really quite a bit more insidious. It is specifically designed to be self-replicating. And so such a program will tend to copy and send itself from one computer to another, send replicas of itself to those contacts. 
So a worm can be propagated much more rapidly than a virus. Uh, so, so then the difference between a virus and a worm is therefore similar to how high winds can make a difference in spreading a fire rapidly. Uh, a firewall in a computer system is very similar to a physical firewall. Um, it's a means of partitioning to stop the spread, in this case, of worms and viruses and other malicious code. So a firewall wall, uh, for computer systems, for networks, works by filtering packets. All the messages entering or leaving the network uh, pass through the firewall. The firewall will examine those messages and block those that don't meet the certain specified security rules. Uh, you can implement a firewall on a single machine or on a separate machine that uh, filters all the network traffic coming from the internet to, say, a particular business or location. Uh, just as in a firebreak has to be backed up by other mechanisms, a firewall also has to be backed up by other mechanisms because it can't filter out all malicious code. Uh, a fireproof vault or safe is another way that we partition off and try to protect valuables. Um, and a typical design for a fireproof safe is, uh, involves the use of gypsum and some sort of concrete or masonry that surrounds the center chamber where you have the precious items. And when heated by fire, that water is chemically bound, that is chemically bound within the material, is actually released as steam, and then it consumes much of the fire's energy to keep the contents from burning. So we have the idea then of this um, secure central area uh, in fire protection. Uh, similarly, now this is a little bit from my work. Uh, I've been working for a number of years uh, Rick mentioned uh, the, the NSF grant that I have had, and that has supported the work on this uh, system we call Starfish. And uh, part of the reason why we call it Starfish, I'll, I'll get to in a minute. But basically, the idea is that we have a number of computer nodes, and uh, we have different security models. We keep the critical components, much as in a vault or fireproof safe, we keep the critical components in the inner model where they're highly protected. And actually, I see one of the students out here who worked with me on the system, Mike. Hi. <laughs> and uh, so he uh, also, Mike Magnuson, also worked with me on this uh, system. And so this is similar to the idea of a fireproof vault. Uh, we could also, in computer six systems, have hierarchical protection domains. Um, and so you'll identify, you'll define the access that's granted to a range of users um, from the most privileged to the least privileged. And depending on how much privilege you have, that determines how much of the system that you are actually able to access. The data and services that are most sensitive or critical are those that are protected by the highest security. Um, another thing that can happen, and this is a story that we actually heard from our neighborhood, not from the um, more recent fires, from, but from, I believe, the Coyote Fire, um, where one of our neighbors uh, uh, borders the canyon and their porch was on fire, and they actually took a chainsaw to the porch and kicked it down the canyon and protected the rest of the house. And so <laughs> removing a burning segment, uh, such as a porch or a deck, can be sawed off to, pr to protect the rest of the structure. 